thanks for uh, thanks for sitting down, man. Especially w- as you get married on the weekend. We haven't spoken about that. Yeah, yeah. Mate. a couple of days. What we on Tuesday now? Uh, I've managed to get an hour away from my missus making me do jobs. <laughs> um, but yeah, get married on Saturday. So mate, that's insane. Exciting. Uh, yeah, because I um, like we first met when you first signed at Sussex, and I was playing for Sussex. You, yeah. What year did you sign? So this was this season just gone was my fifth summer at Sussex. Yeah. yeah so five years ago. So you almost were six years ago, signed, 2014. Yeah. yeah, around then, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, and I remember when you first turned up and um, you just come from, from Essex and there was so much, like, I remember the first day you walked in and you were bowling and I was like, man, <laughs> this is going to be exciting that you're going to be here. Because uh, pe- like people that don't know you, you're one of the world's fastest bowlers. Like, you, you can bowl at some serious pace. And I think I remember being in a net with you and thinking, oh, He's off two steps. He's just faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but no, thanks for thanks for sitting down. I um, I didn't know much about you before you you signed it with us. Yeah. Um, but very quickly it was apparent like how good you were, and I remember on a preseason trip about like your outlook on the game, and I was instantly sort of like really impressed by how you looked to in into the sport, but. Let's kind of go to where you started out in in cricket, and we can get onto stuff like that. But um, yeah, where did you where did you when did you first start playing cricket? Yeah, my my journey into games was a bit di- well, probably very different uh, to most. Um, yeah, where I grew up, I grew up in Suffolk. Um, I went to state school, um, and so cricket wasn't part of the the school curriculum at all. Um, only the private schools really had the facilities or played cricket. Um, so yeah, when I was forty, I'd messed around in the park, you know. Around that kind of 05 Ashes time, obviously on, yeah. channel, on Channel 4, you know, I didn't have Sky or anything growing up and that was very available, wasn't it, to, yeah. to everybody. Um, so I remember just being down the, you know, the leisure centre or whatever in, in Brandon back home and we'd, we'd, we'd mess around with cricket and we'd, we'd play, but just, 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 just messing around. And then, yeah, I, remember, I still remember the day, the day. It's a weird one considering how kind of innocuous it was. But um, yeah, my mate, it was like a wet, it must have been Wednesday. He's, he played for Tuddenham midweek league side and it was it was like Wednesday morning at school and they had a game that night and he was sh- their team was short and he asked me oh can you come and help me out we, we need an extra player you know I'll drop you off home afterwards or my, his dad will drop me drop drop, um, drop me off home afterwards and yeah turned up for Tuddenham that night in a midweek league game like a 15 over 15 over game um, proper village cricket as you know, as village as you can as you can yeah. get, like uh, changing rooms were porter cabins, like wow, the the original village cricket. It, it was great, and they gave me an over near the end to kind of say, you know, thank you for helping us out. And I had a bowl, and I yeah, I hit somebody on the I think the shoulder or the arm. Uh, it was quite a long over, I bowled a load of wides and stuff, but um, yeah, I loved it. And then the rest of that summer, I really just kind of just played midweek league, maybe the odd Sunday game. Because I was still playing football and stuff at the time as well, so yeah, I'd play just just socially with with a few mates, and and yeah, that was kind of the the beginning of it. When did you? Um, so you you reckon straight away you knew you kind of had pace? Yeah, but I didn't know enough about cricket to really realise kind of how much, or I'd never would have, would have envisaged where kind of my my career would have gone. As yeah, so there was no kind of path at that point. It nah, wasn't like this big shining light. No, nah, no. Nah, were you a fan of cr- like were you a fan of sports? Like, did you go watch any games and stuff? Nah. Like that? No, I never went to to watch cricket. As I said, where I grew up, I grew up in Suffolk. The closest professional side were Chum- was Essex at Chelmsford, which is kind of a good hour and a half away. So it's not it's not you know yeah. accessible. But as I said, the 05 Ashes was my first kind of an only really memory of of, of watching and and getting into cricket. Um, growing up but yeah no apart from that I kind of just stumbled into it yeah I think that series was like a this is a catalyst for me I think as well mm. like that terrestrial once it was on terrestrial tv and you get to see God, that that was just like memorable I think the only thing that kind of comes close to it was this summer yeah for sure of cricket but um so then when did you when did you kind of get into that idea of a arc oh, this could be something that I want to do as a career yeah, um, oh, as a career, probably not until I was 17, until I got offered a place on the academy at Essex. Um, kind of the ages 14 and 15, I literally just played village cricket with my mates, just just having a laugh, just enjoying it. Did someone scout you? Did you yeah, get found? Yeah, pretty much. Kind of went from playing for, for Tuddenham, which is a you know village team back home, 
to then kind of the guys at Tottenham realizing that I should probably go to a better club mm. and Milden Hall is the kind of just the next kind of town along it's a big club they were like uh, premier division two grounds proper youth set up so yeah when I was I think I was 16 maybe 15 I can't remember they Tottenham kind of passed me on to to Milden Hall which is a bigger club and then I played you know some age group stuff for Milden Hall and started playing some Saturday cricket in the threes um, again, very raw, very wild, yeah. um, and then yeah. So the um, I then got, I then got kind of got selected to play for Suffolk at under 17s. Right. Okay. Uh, maybe I might have played an, an under 16s game maybe a few, a few years ago now. So I can't, yeah. can't quite remember, but I definitely played a lot of Suffolk under 17s that year. I was 17, maybe a little bit the year before. Again, very erratic, but I was I was I was clearly the fastest bowler yeah. there. Um, my figures were often pretty terrible because I bowled loads of wides, no balls, uh, beamers, yeah, yeah. everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I was again, I was just enjoying it. I, I was, I was learning the game. Like I had to learn the fielding positions, yeah, batting, fielding, all that good stuff. I'd, so you're really getting like almost a crash course in yeah. how to play the game. Yeah, literally. And then Suffolk then referred me, obviously. Um, Bobby Flack, who was the head coach of my Suffolk kind of eight, I think he was in charge of the Suffolk age groups. He obviously spoke to John Childs, who at the time was the academy director at, at Essex. Mm. I think he still might be actually. Um, and then, yeah, I remember when I was 17, Essex had a had a friendly against Glamorgan at Halstead, um, a, th- a, a three day game, I think it was, end of, like in September. And they invited me down to come play in this three day friendly. And, and I did, and I think I took four wickets in the first innings, all with all with bouncers, just just literally just, <laughs> just, just running in bowling. Oh, bouncers. Just trying to hit guys in the head. Yeah, I didn't care. Yeah. I was, that's all I knew how to do. I literally I couldn't pitch it up. I, all, all I could do was bowl short and fast. So. Was that was that your mentality then? Because because you were kind of learning the game tactically. Yeah. You was your was was your way of thinking just like just bowl fast. Like do yeah. something, do what you can. Like play to your strength. Do what you can do. Hundred percent. Like, yeah. I just I did all I knew how to do. I'd yeah. Just, I'd try and do other things, and sometimes you wouldn't get it right. So you do what you know how to do. Don't yeah. You? So, and then yeah, I remember. Again, still remember very clearly. Um, end of that three day game, Chazzy sat me down on the bench and you know offered me a bit of paper, the con- academy contract for Essex there and then for for that winter. Um, so that was kind of September to start training in end of October or whenever it was. Um, he said he'd come up to Suffolk to meet my mum and, you know, go through, you know, what's going to be required um, and how it's going to work with school and travel. And there's a lot to go into it because, as I said, I wasn't from Essex. Mm. But, yeah, Essex obviously wanted to get me on the academy straight away. And, and then, yeah, then I did a full winter on the academy that, that year when I was 17. And that that's going to be when you, I'm guessing, started to think, right, this could be... This could be a profession. Yeah, yeah, you're right. As you say, by then I've I've played a bit of cricket. I've started to watch cricket more. I've started to learn. I've obviously I've mm. got a, an interest in playing cricket. So you know about county cricket. You know about England. You know about all that. So yeah, it was exciting. You know, you get all the gear and and, and all that good stuff. Yeah, it's said. a fun fun time. That, yeah, isn't it? So Chazzy drove up, you know, to Suffolk to meet my mum. As you say, explain all that and and yeah, like you, you you're a part of the Essex Academy. Again, I'd never been, that's obviously the highest level I've ever been involved with. So you don't know how you're going to stack up in, in that circle. Um, but yeah, it was it was an exciting time. Um, my school were really good at letting me, you know, miss school. I had to get a bus and, a, and two trains down to Chelmsford there and back twice a week to go to training and stuff. But yeah, at the time, because everything was so so new and so fresh, hmm. you just... You just enjoyed it. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't bored of a lot. You get a lot of guys by the time they're 17, 18, they're a bit bored of cricket because they've been well, if you've been in the, five yeah, if you've or, been in the system yeah, ages, like it's a, it's a tough one. Like yeah. as now coaching guys that like you see, it, I, it's actually not, it's, it's any sport. I think like there's, there's that balance of when you've got someone going from a young, yeah. young junior all the way through a system, you've got to balance their enjoyment of the game both myself and you we kind of crashed into the sport yeah, as well sure. like and and i you, i think that then your drive ends up being later on probably at the right time mm-hmm. probably definitely at the right time was there anyone you idolized by the way was there anyone you kind of when you got into it because if you didn't really yeah no nah, support... i get asked that question like, who were your heroes growing yeah. up no nah, I, I didn't have any i think as i got a little bit older so probably once i started to become professional i'd i'd take more of an interest in watching Left arm fast bowlers. Yeah. Dirk Nanez, Mitchell Johnson. Yeah. 
you know, Mitchell Stark now. Any, any, uh, just naturally because you you relate to them, don't you? You're, yeah, you're doing yeah. the same thing you, as you them. You want to try and replicate similar success. Yeah, but no, I, I didn't have a you know a cricketing hero or or anybody that I am um, that I really idolised growing up. No. Yeah. So you so you got on when you were seventeen, eighteen onto the academy. Then, um, like, when was your kind of breakthrough? Yeah, so I did that that whole winter in the academy with Essex. Then that summer, obviously, I played second team cricket for Essex. Yeah. Um, throughout the summer, I didn't play a professional game that summer. I just played second team cricket. Uh, again, a lot of failure, a lot of you know, a bit of success. But again, I, I didn't really care. I didn't. I didn't really. You get a lot of guys. I think now, and as you say, I'm sure it's the same in other sports. When they get to, if they're a, a, an academy player playing second team cricket they might get overawed by it and they think because right, yeah. it is a big deal isn't it if, if you look at yeah. it from a an outsider if you know if you if you're a club cricketer you'd, you'd love to play a second team game but because yeah. I didn't really have the context of, of what was going on because everything had kind of just gone as it was going and I was kind of just moving up the the um the kind of the pyramid I just just in, I was just enjoying it I was just having yeah. and, I, and I was still learning as, I, as I've said I was still learning so much about cricket I wasn't bored of it I was excited it was still clear at that time that I was probably the quickest bowler in most games. Um, again, I wasn't always the best by any stretch, but I was I was the quickest, and you know I'd hit people or I'd I'd make people look a bit uncomfortable. I was very inconsistent, but yeah, so I'd, I just enjoyed that whole summer playing second team cricket. Um, so then had my 18th birthday. Then I left school. I went to university because I didn't. I, I, at this time, I still hadn't. I, I wasn't a professional, so I, I'd move, I was. I was desperate to move out of Suffolk. I, was, yeah. I wasn't going to stay in Suffolk. My mum was, she was encouraging me to go out. So I went to uni in London, in East London. Um, I got offered an academy pro contract with with um, with Essex. So they kind of you know, bumped me up a little bit. You're not getting much money, but it's a little bit of money each mm-hmm. month, and it keeps you obviously on the books. You're not just an academy member anymore, no. but you're not quite in the in the first team. So that was nice. I was I was at uni. I had a little bit of money in my pocket. Um, which obviously you don't often have in halls. So, um, and it actually, where I moved to in East London was easier to get to Chelmsford than it was when I lived in Suffolk. So everything worked out perfectly. I was like, I'll go to uni. As I said, at this point, I didn't know what was going to happen. So I'll go to uni. I'll you know try and get my degree. I'll still keep going. You know, I'll train two, three times a week. Get the train out to Chelmsford, and just you know just just have a crack and have a belter and just keep enjoying life. Really, that's that was that was where I got to at that point. I remember. I think I remember playing a. Um, I remember playing a second team game against you, and you were right. Like you were erratic, and I think that was what terrified a lot of people mm. because you could bowl a lot faster than most of the people on show, and people were like I don't know literally where this is coming yeah, out. And and it, <laughs> yeah, and Yeah, so if this is going to hit me in the head, it's going to hit me on the toes. Whatever it happens, it's going to hit me, and it could be hot. It yeah. could seriously hurt. Um, but when did you? When did you start to because where you are now mm. compared to where you were is a completely different yeah. bowler. Like some of the stuff I saw this year was probably the best I've seen you bowl yeah. ever. Mm-hmm. Like pace, control, like tactics. Just watching from the sidelines, it was it was really really fun to watch. Um, but when did you kind of start to um, really tail in that sort of consistency? I don't reckon for a few years. Eh? I think so that first year, as I said, I went to uni. I got picked on England under 19s that winter also, having done nothing really. Then I went to Sri Lanka with them in the January, didn't do very well. I was very unfit. That was when kind of fitness became more of yeah. a, an aspect, need to get fitter. I was, yeah. I was quite podgy. I was 2020 it, probably had started as well. And, and that, Yeah, I still had, a, I'd never played a game or anything yet, but um, still hadn't played for Essex. Uh, I was at uni, I was living the uni life, you know, yeah. drinking <laughs> and then eating pretty poorly. Um, and then... Yeah, from there that summer, I then made my professional debut for Essex in a four-day game against Sri Lanka, um, and I played. I, remember, I played well, bowled well, and then played a four-day game at at, um, at Leicester and and took a few wickets, bowled, bowling quick. Um, and from there, that was nice. You know, your first game in the profession in the, mm. as a professional in a four-day game against you know playing with. You know, Ravi Bapara, Ryan Tenderskarta, these, you know, yeah. big names. Um, but holding your own, that's when kind of you realise, you you know, you can do it. Yeah. Then I think I, think, I think I signed a two-year contract after that. But I don't I don't reckon, genuinely, my career obviously went through a lot of different periods in terms of a lot of injuries. 
but I reckon it's probably been the last three years. I reckon where yeah. I've where I've probably I don't want to say cracked it, but I've I, I think I know what I'm doing now. Yeah. Um, in terms of control and, and as you say, this year, what well, I'm 27, just turned 27 this summer. It was probably the best that I was bowling. I went to Pakistan in February, played in the PSL, and then this summer here for Sussex until I got injured. Um, yeah, it was probably the the best I was bowling. So, yeah, it's twenty seven years old. <laughs> yeah, that that time that time period of when it kind of gets cracked for some people is so different. Yeah. It, you get people that are doing it at like twenty one and they're nailing it, or you can get them at like thirty one and then they bang it it clicks. Um, and you mentioned you played four day cricket because you don't play that anymore. Mm. Um, and you've touched on injuries, and that's something that I do want to talk to you about because you as well have have had your fair share of injuries. <laughs> I think, um, oh God, well, I mean, there's, when did you get your first one that was, that was kind of, because uh, bowling fast is not easy. Like I think yeah. people need to realize that they need to realize that it's this is such an thing unnatural to thing yeah. to do. And a guy of your size as well. I remember, yeah. especially when you turned up here, you were, you, if you just looked at a weight, you put on muscle, like mm. you, like your genetics of being able to put on muscle were different to everyone else's. So you were doing different stuff in the gym. But um, like you were aware of sort of the the toll that it was going to take on your body to bowl the pace that you do. Um, but when did it kind of get that first niggle and first injury where you were kind of maybe threatened, like mm. what you were you were going to? You know what? It, it actually came <coughs> completely out of the blue. I played a couple of seasons at Essex, pretty much injury free. Uh, I wasn't in very good shape looking back or looking at photos of myself. Yeah. You know, as you say, I'm I'm not built like your traditional cricketer. I'm I'm six one, so I'm not overly tall, but I weigh I haven't weighed under a hundred kilos since I was I reckon nineteen, twenty. Like yeah. I'm I'm, I'm a dead. Well, that's I'm, rugby I'm, type I'm, exactly. stats, isn't it? So people are always surprised when you say oh, I'm a cricketer because you know, I don't really look like one. Yeah. Um but yeah, I'm I'm a heavy fella. Like I'm probably in you know, this last year no, two years I've I'm probably in the best nick I've, I've been in, but I still, um, I'm flickering around 100, 101 kg. I find it very difficult to, to just get, to, under to get below trophies. that. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, my injury, very complicated. Don't know if this, this podcast will be long enough to, 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 list talk, them to talk about it, but my main problem with my back started um, my last, yeah, my last year at Essex before I ended up leaving and it came completely out, out of the blue. Literally, I ran in one day for the second team Playing, a, I remember actually the the week before we'd had a first team game at Hampshire. I, I bowled terribly. Uh, James Vince scored double hundred. We got thrashed, and a load of us got sent to the second team. We, got, we all got dropped pretty much back back <laughs> to the second team the week after. Go which, sort it out, exactly. Fellas. And I, I bowled really well. I remember day one. I think I bowled fifteen overs maybe by T. Um, bowled them out. I think I might have got four for five for. We then batted rest of that night, most of the next day, and then we went out to to bowl again that. That, that afternoon and then literally I ran in I remember it clear as day first ball ran in and literally the, as soon as I my front foot hit the crease I had this big shock all around my legs into my sorry all around my waist into my legs um, my legs like spasmed I couldn't walk properly it was bizarre like, yeah. like I didn't really know what was going on I had like pins and needles in my feet and my legs yeah, I was like, it's just weird. Like, so you don't know what's going on. So yeah. I kind of walked back to my mark. I was walking a bit funny. Um, tried to run in and bowl the next ball, but I couldn't run properly. Like, my legs just... Just didn't legs, work. My legs weren't working properly. Wow. Um, really bizarre. Physio comes on. Obviously, I go off the field with him. It's clear that I'm, you know, I'm not going to bowl anymore. I do a few tests. I remember I went to do a squat and I, I couldn't, couldn't get back up. Like, my legs were just not not working. So that was when I was 22, I think, um, maybe even 21. No, 22, I think. So I played a little bit of first, quite a bit of first team, four day stuff before then for Essex. Yeah. Uh, a little bit of 40 over cricket, and um, yeah, that was the first, that was the start of kind of the end of my my four day career. So what are they? It was the start of the end. Yeah. So what are they diagnosed it as by then? Well, by then nothing. So yeah, we um, obviously the physio didn't know what was going on. It's, is very bizarre because um, most people in bowling would think straight away fracture yeah and they they would think it was a, a stress fracture yeah, i had no like, back I pain know. yeah i had zero back pain just, just waist my, down my, just my legs, legs didn't working work. yeah um and then i think obviously we canned it for the rest of the day and it, it the rest of the day it settled down 
my legs, you know, I was walking properly. Um, I had pins and needles in my feet and stuff. I had numb patches on my legs. I've still got a numb patch now on my on my right quad. Um, five years later or whatever it is, six years later. Nah. Um, so basically I, got, I went off to London, neurologist, scan, brain scan, spine scans. Um, I had a lumbar puncture done, uh, which wasn't pleasant. Nah. Um, I didn't know at the time, the, the neurologist only told me afterwards that he thought I might have the early signs of MS. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so yeah, as I said, he only told me this after. 22. Yeah, 22. That is scary. Um, so he only told me all this after all this, the tests obviously came back um, fine. And ultimately he said he, they, they couldn't be sure why it happened, but on my scans, I've got a period from, I think it's T, T7 to T9, I think. It's the middle of my back where the canal where your spinal cord goes down, mine's very narrow, yeah, just for about a couple of inches. So, so they reckon the more and more I bowled, because I'm very hypermobile in my joints and in my yeah. back, um, the more and more I bowled, it'd kind of agitate the spinal cord and then eventually it kind of short circuits. Mm. And then that's when obviously the, the problems with my legs happen because it happened a few times, so kind of it settled down. We tried to get back and it happened a couple of times, never as bad as it did that first day, but it, it, it was clear once I bowled quite a few times, um, it, it, it happened again. Um, and then, yeah, that was the start of the start end of that. So when, when, when you moved from Essex to Sussex, mm. you, I remember you arriving, you weren't 100% um, yep. sh still sure then, were you? You were uh, still having scans. I remember you saying you were going in, you were going in like MRI machines where they were like designed for for like zoos and stuff yeah, like that I because you were having to, to get in like different yeah, positions yeah. and like neurosurgeons <laughs> were just coming to check you out and uh, so and you were having uh, as we're having like morning tests on like power stuff you were having like numbness tests yeah, yeah. on your legs and I was like wow this guy's going through like some <laughs> serious stuff and like I said you weren't doing gym workouts that we were doing you were doing other stuff yeah, that yeah. was um, that was insane and now you like you then ended up managing it didn't you you ended up sort of like they came up with a diagnosis like you said yeah and then the, the management for that was uh, medication or yeah was it surgery or no so i've never had surgery i've had no. so many injuries i've actually never, never been had under, a surgery. never been under the knife i've had a few injections obviously but um yeah so as as all that stuff was going on in essex i was actually in the last year of my contract which is obviously never a nice place to be you don't know what your future is kind of going to be and Essex was stalling on offering me a new contract, which is fair enough. I was injured. We didn't know how badly I was injured. So they were stalling, stalling, stalling. And it, it got to like a month. I was like, my contract's running out in a month. I had other teams interested. So I met with Worcester, Lancashire, came down here, decided um, Mark Robinson, who was the head coach at the time, I'd been on an England Lions tour and he was the coach the winter, that winter before and I bowled really well. He was keen for me to come down. Sussex then obviously had to do their due diligence on me. And like I said, the scans, yeah, these different scanners up in London where I'm bent backwards whilst being MRI'd and stuff. It's, it's all quite bizarre, but um, yeah. And basically I needed to get in better shape. We thought if I got, if I lost weight and got in better shape, that's less pressure going through, through my spine. Um, so we did that, um, you know, spent the whole, I'd, ne I'd never spent a whole winter in the country before. I'd always been away on either England under 19s or England lines uh, camps and tours. So I did a whole winter here down in Brighton, which was cold and, yeah. um, on the track and doing all that stuff. But I, I got in, in, you know, in the best shape, you know, I've carried that through now. That was kind of the, st when I moved here was the start of getting in, in, in better shape. And then, and then, yeah, we went to Abu Dhabi on pre-season tour that March, March time. Um, everything was good. No, yeah. no problems at all. Again, in good shape, bowling well. And then started the season. You played four day. Stuff. Yeah, I played you, the first. You, you came back to play the longer format. Yeah, game, didn't played you? the first four day game. I didn't actually have to bowl that many overs in a day. The way that we won the game and the yeah. way it went, and then the second game, which ended up being my last, was was here. Um, Ajmal Shazad was sick in the first inning, so we were a bowler down. I remember this game. So I had to bowl. So it was all the other bowlers had to bowl more. Mm. And again, I bowled fifteen or so overs by T was bowling really well and then I came out after tea to bowl the first over and then bang I kind of had the had the repeat the again, numbness came back yeah and the yeah. shock not again not as bad as it did that first day in, in Bishop Stortford but um but yeah it was back and then 
yeah, had to have all the scans again. Luckily, all came back clear, but you know that was that was the end of that. But by then, you knew how to manage it. You knew how to like look after the injury and no, such. Or like, not, not really. Or, or kind of you you kind of had a structure in place better than what you did, like, maybe. Well, because it had now happened t- twice, we obviously had, we had a decision to make because there's just, there's health ramifications. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I had to have more scans, and then yeah, I was 23 at this point. And yeah, I remember being sat in the office here with Mark Robinson, physios, Zach Tomazi, the who was the chief exec. Yeah. Um, doctors, all that, and yeah, got offered retirement there and there. Like, I'd, wow. I had medical grounds to retire if, if 23. Yeah, if that was one of the because you know, worst case scenario, it could happen again, and I could. I could mess. I could lose. I remember you coming in, in the changing legs, room and everyone, so. and you were really down. And uh, everyone was like, just, "I think everyone just asked you, sort of like the clear cut, like what was going on." And at the time, you were like, "I don't know if every ball that I'm bowling, I'm paralysing myself." Yeah, you didn't know if you were going to literally walk. That's, yeah, that's that, that's the worst case scenario. That was the worst yeah, case yeah, yeah. scenario. But you, when you said that, everyone was like, "Okay, this is not just uh, pins yeah. and needles. Yeah, yeah, this is this is teasing." He's got something going on. Yeah, it wasn't great. No, and I remember that. And um, and then so that was yeah. You you actually decided to to stop playing the the longer format just because the workload. Yeah, exactly. Like, so it it, it only ever workload. happened when I'd bowled a lot. That just looking at it in the most basic, you know, terms. Yeah, it only ever happened when I'd been bowling lots of overs in a in a day or the day before. So yeah. the easiest way to to manage that is to not bowl as much. Yeah, so, yeah. Get rid of that. So luckily, T twenty. Is um is a, is obviously very prominent now, so we thought, all right, take another. It was another. I think it was another six weeks till the T Twenty mm-hmm. start. Okay, take a few more weeks off to you know let your body calm down, and then you know we'll we'll see what happens if you know just just playing twenty twenties. Yeah, before we go on to the T Twenty and where you went with that, um, what was your what was I get it a lot of people asking about injuries and what you what you how you overcome injuries and what you do during them. What was I guess what would what did you do and what would be your advice to to people that are suffering with injuries they don't know what to do they it's very easy to feel like the whole world is coming down and think that worst case scenario like oh god I'm not going to walk again I'm going to lose my job I'm going to yeah. all these sort of things like mortgage whatever um what what was sort of the thing for you that kept you through your, your periods of injury yeah it's it's def- it's difficult that this situation's very a very extreme situation mm. i've then since had and i'm injured now i've got a stress fracture now um th- that's a more realistic situation yeah where, but back then it, i had three options it was retire you have medical you know for insurance and mm-hmm. things, as, as you know you have kind of the medical grounds to yeah. retire and yeah. your payouts and stuff that's one option other option is we try again with all forms cricket or the other the other option is 2020s um I, I remember I, I was sat there with all these people. I said, there, I, wasn't, I was never going to retire. I said, look, yeah, look, we'll do 2020s. But the club had to give me time to, to process that information and all that. And I remember I went home to my flat. I was living with my mate, Fred. He was at work. I remember just I was just sat in an empty flat the rest of that day after being kind of told this. Because I'm not from down here. I'm from yeah. three hours away. Um, and yeah, it was a lonely place. It was, yeah. it was interesting. It was, it was tough. Even though I knew what I wanted to do. I had to wait till the next day to give my official answer and I had to sign waivers, you know, clearing the club of any legal responsibility yeah. and, and all that, which is fine. And, and that they provided me with all the information and all that, all that good stuff. But um, yeah, man, injuries, injuries are tough. You just need, you need something to aim for. I think you need a, an end goal. I think I deal with, I deal with injuries differently now because I have different pressures now than what I did mm. four or five years ago. I said, oh, I'm getting married this weekend. You know, I've got to think about that. You know, starting a family and stuff. I've got different responsibilities. I've got a mortgage and, and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. So you have different worries as you get older. But you need something to aim for. You need a, a date. You need a, a something to, 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 to keep going. You know? yeah. it's, it's like I had, I, had a, I had a scan yesterday up in London, saw the specialist. It's like, yeah, okay, it's healing, but it's maybe not healing as quick as what you'd like and it, you do you get a, you get a bit down and he's got to find okay what's my next what's what's something to to aim for and then what have you got on the side away from cricket for away from from uh from from your injury to keep you you know you're occupied during your days because you know when you're injured you can only really do an hour two hours worth of 
stuff during the day you know you rehab your gym or whatever maybe yeah. three hours yeah apart from that you're a bit lost aren't you you're a bit yeah. pointless you actually have there's nothing to do you've got to wait <laughs> so yeah. it's um it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a tough place to be it's not a nice place what um so you said you stuff outside of outside of your sport that took a focus as well so that's where you put your energy was there anything in particular you put your energy into so i'd say when i was younger and i was injured not as much i didn't yeah. have as much as i was going on again i was 23 24 it's hard as well because you're like all i want to do is play sport exactly. all i'm a sportsman all i want to do is just play sport i of just want to i just want to be the want. best i want to do yeah now as it, as it got a bit older obviously things in those few years in the last three years have gone very well for me on the field yeah. and then off the field even though i keep getting injured i've i'm in a position now where i'm very fortunate I, i'm you know i'm set up quite well not you know but now i've I've, I've dipped my toe into media work and stuff. And so mm -hmm. basically, as soon as I get injured, I'm on the phone to my agent to tell him to get me work yep. pretty much. Because one, it keeps me busy. Two, it brings in another bit of income. Mm -hmm. And yeah, yeah, more importantly, it keeps me doing something. Yeah, mentally I'm taking just, over. I'm not just sat around. Um, Again, that's another goal, isn't it? It's like another exactly. motivation. It's something else. It's My my advice always being when someone's injured is... is find your motivation in somewhere else other than dwelling on that mm. that injury that you've had like that will take care of itself if you do the right things the outcome will be the best it possibly can be um other than that like try to find motivation in other stuff which will keep that positive outlook on on what you've got going on because yeah it can get can get pretty in, intense sometimes yeah. when it's when you're injured and it's boring like yeah. you have you have nothing to you're a professional cricketer you don't work a nine to five so it's not like you know, my my missus gets frustrated sometimes because I'm um, I'm injured and I'm not playing. You know, she loves supporting me, so she's not able to do that. Yeah. So literally, I've got a rehab for two hours a day, and the rest of the day, I'm I'm sat around doing yeah. nothing. I don't have another. You know, I'm still getting paid. This is my job, but I don't have anything to do. I walk the dog, you know, in the morning and in the afternoon. Aside from that, you don't have anything to do. So you have to find you have to find something. So for me, as I said, I've I've managed to get into to quite a lot of media work outside of playing um, I'd much rather be playing instead of talking about cricket every day of the week I love playing I feel I'm still good enough to, to have, a, have a decent career for the next few years yeah. but um, yeah you've unfortunately you've, you've got to think about other stuff um, so yeah that's 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 one thing I've, I've learned and, and learned quickly yeah um, so you've overcome that injury you chose t20 mm. and then it wasn't long I guess it wasn't actually that long before you ended up playing for England. Once you had that sustained period of playing, because as soon as you were fit, you chose T20, the workload on your body wasn't as much. Then you played for England pretty quickly after that. Yeah, uh, I think it was two... I played the rest of that summer. for No, yeah, it was a year later. So yeah. so that happened here in like April. T20s for Sussex started in June or whenever it was. And I played that summer for Sussex, just T20s. Did really well. But because I'd kind of, ha I had to take a month off and then went into playing T20s, I picked up injuries, ankle, you know, all the, all the normal stuff. And then, yeah, I did really well for Sussex playing T20s That's that summer when I was, yeah, 23, I think. And then the ECB were brilliant because they still, they obviously were aware of everything that was going on because I was in the, I was on the ECB pathway mm. all the way through, you know. My goal was to play test, test cricket for England. That was what I was kind of shooting for, mm -hmm. whether it was realistic or not. It's another, yeah. another question, but um, they were brilliant. They they pretty much took me that whole winter to help me get my get my body right. Pete Atkinson was the head S and C at the time. He's moved on to um, Italian rugby now, but he um, yeah they you know he, he took me away. I was at Loughborough a lot. I went if if the England under 19s were doing a thing in South Africa for three weeks I'd go on that just to get some training and outdoor obviously you can't you're limited to what you can do in England aren't you throughout the mm. winter so they you know they, they they did a brilliant job of helping me get in shape and you know all the the new exercises and core work and, yeah. and all that good stuff so that that was that was a brilliant winter for me it wasn't a competitive winter it was just a you know five months of different training um and then yeah then kind of came back in and around Sussex for pre-season, got ready for the for the T20s here. That's that 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 summer, and then yeah, made my England debut what, at the start of that summer. What was your outlook on the game? Um, so like, how did you play the game? If you could sum it up, like how how was how were you going about those games by then? Because there is that looming sort of like I've been injured in the past, 
um, was, it, was, it, was that something you, I remember we sat down at a um, and the team meeting for a bowlers team meeting on a pre-season trip and the first word that came out of your mouth was enjoyment and I thought wow do you know what that's like amazing because it's so easy in, in professional sport to lose sight of that because of those pressures because mm. of those doubts because of and to lose sight of actually enjoying it and then you were sitting there going well, I just want to if I don't enjoy it then yeah. then I'm screwed. did you go was that literally your fundamental it w- thing going it in it was but this might sound a bit arrogant when I say it but I hadn't really failed right that much. okay yeah whenever I was fit and on the park for the most part I'd done well so that's easy for me to say yeah um, at that point of my career anyway I'd had kind of things had had dipped since then but um i found well, as soon as i stopped basically as soon as i stopped playing four day cricket went into t20s um i found i was naturally better at it than i was at four day cricket mm-hmm. so once i retired from longer form cricket and just played 2020 obviously my development accelerated because all i was practicing was 2020 cricket all my t- all i was thinking about was 2020 cricket yeah everything so naturally you progress and then I just found naturally I was better. I was my skill set, my pace, my slower balls, um, the length I bowled was was naturally suited to to that form of the game, and as such, I then I had success. Yeah. So, it looking back, it's it's very easy for me to say go out there and enjoy it because it's easy to enjoy it if you know you're probably going to do well, isn't it? Yeah, I, I actually yeah, I agree I agree I agree with that because because the blessing that you have, I guess, is your pace, and that in in any format of the game, like it's shown this year. When people see pace, people. I remember saying, um, being at a game and you were bowling, and people like yourself, Joffre as well now, like yeah. the, the guys that are bowling are well above 90 mile an hour, it gets people off the bar. Yeah. It, people turn around. And I remember Sean Tate playing here, yeah, yeah. and like Sean Tate bowling above 95, sure. and, and everyone turns around and watches it. Yeah. And then it's just another level for a batsman like to face. It's just that much harder. And it, I guess it is hard to fail when everyone you're coming up against is is almost scared of what you're about to produce to them yeah. um but how does that feel i mean probably guess none of the answer but like <laughs> well has it feel being at the top of your mark knowing kind of you've got that on people yeah it's empowering yeah you, know, you, you have a bit of swagger about you, you yeah. have your chest out um i've i haven't thought i've actually thought about it too much but i'm with the amount of injuries i've had leading up to say this summer i think it's obviously um, very grateful it's still very good that I can still bowl fast I haven't mm. lost pace yet which is a, g- a good thing for me mm. I know at some point you're going to lose pace aren't you mm. as, 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 as all cricketers do um, but right as, as of this summer I was still bowling as quick as, if not quicker than, than I have done previously um, but yeah it's a, it's a good feeling especially see, where we, we're sat now at the county ground it's on a hill I bowl pretty much exclusively down the hill which is which is way da- more daunting it, yeah. for people <laughs> so like my record here at Hove is, is very good it's a bit different when you go away but um but yeah it is empowering um i enjoy it i think it's a weapon mm. um and yeah I, I certainly try and try and use it and you said you've had times when you're up mm. like you've had that empowerment and how about now have you had moments where it's not gone so well and have you felt in those what are the things that you kind of have felt gone through your mind when when those moments happen and how do you bring it back to yeah to being good again so that probably that's the fast forwarding quite a bit. So I kind of I played for England and I I blew up a little bit on the kind of yeah okay stage. Yeah, that's actually speaking about because your skill set changed massively yeah. like you and then your Yorkers hitting people on the feet hitting people on the head and controlling it as well. Then England comes calling you play for England in T twenty you make your debut for England yeah then very quickly IPL yeah o- so that, over to Indian that was a big moment yeah. and in around time I remember everyone going yes like yeah, yeah. he's on the big stage what. Let's actually talk about the IPL because yeah. that is one hell of a stage to be. What is that like? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But even, sorry, just leading up to it, as you say, I played for England. I did well that summer again in county cricket. I then got on the, you know, the T20 bandwagon, the circuit, and did the the competitions, just went in at, at the bottom price of every auction there was to just, just wherever I could go. I you know, spoke to my agent and was like, look, you just need to get yourself out there. Because I'd only played one game for England. Yeah, it's, it's a weird, it's a it's, it's a bit more it's a bit different now. But normally the the guys that have the big reputations internationally from playing Test cricket 
are then you get your big contracts in T20. Yeah. That's yeah. You know, you they come a, in yeah. at a big price. Exactly. And, you have a reputation. You're that you're known. Yeah. I was un, I was unknown. I played one game for England and I played county cricket. That was it. Yeah. So I you went out just to, thrown on the on the list. Exactly. You're just another name, really, unless you know scouts are really you know looking at you. Yeah. So I just went out. I went to Bangladesh. Played there. Went to New Zealand. Um, played a couple of games in the Big Bash. Went to the Pakistan League, which was in Dubai. Literally, I spent five months away from home. Didn't come home. Wow. Just bouncing around the, yeah. the world in a suitcase. It's good fun following the oh, sun. It's awesome, mate. But it gets different responsibilities. I was single. I was 24. Yeah, okay. You do what you want. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, and then, yeah, I was in Dubai playing. That's oh, I went to India, sorry, to play against for England against India in, in three T20 internationals mm-hmm. in, in the January, I think it was. Um, and it was yeah, it was brilliant. And that was, atmosphere must have been mad as well because India absolutely. Even people I was speaking to an American about mm. uh, about cricket and and they didn't realise how big it is, especially when you're in, in when you're in India, yeah, like yeah. how big it really is. Like it's massive, and that would have been sort of your first taste of, yeah. of that. Yeah, I'd never been to India before, so I remember I flew in from Australia. Chris Jordan and I both flew in same flight. We flew into Kolkata. The boys were playing the last um, ODI. So we got there, obviously, we did 12th man for the last ODI and then got ready for the for the T20s. And just being at Eden Gardens, 12th man, 70,000 or 65,000, whatever it was, you, 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 you feel it, Man, do you know what I mean? You nice. appreciate it, it's, it's, it's cool. Um, and then, yeah, I went into the games, you know, my f- only my second international, um, opened the bowling with, with CJ. And yeah, I, I, I did really well. Yeah. Um, I did really well in the three games. And when and was the auction? Two weeks later. Was it? Yeah, after the third, after the third T20. Where were you but when it happened? In Dubai. So oh. I flew from India to Dubai. So I still, still haven't been home <laughs> at this point um, to play in the Pakistan Super League. Um, so yeah, it was like, yeah, maybe two or three weeks later, halfway through the PSL, IPL auction was on TV. So I woke, it was on at like 7 a.m., half seven in the morning. I knew I was up relatively relatively early in the auction. Yep. My agent texted me the night before saying there was quite a bit of interest. Um, but, yeah, but this time you didn't know how much interest? No, nah, we knew, he knew there was a lot of interest. He he thought I could get between four and 600 grand US from what his mm-hmm. feelings were, which blew me away. I've never even, yeah. even looked at that much amount of money. Um, but yeah, then it obviously went yeah went, went, went what was it well a million pa- million 1.2 1. 1. 1. million pound man that's what end. that's what i think the headline i saw the next day was yeah and we you, you were the first englishman to go no, so stokesy stokes went same yeah when same that, he yeah, went for 1.8 i think yeah so it was million. you and him yeah yeah wow and then you played the tournament yeah six weeks of just yeah, well, it, it didn't go brilliantly for no, me. No, but the experience, what was the experience like? Oh, brilliant. I had, yeah. a, I had an awesome time. Um, yeah, I flew, well, yeah, again, I remember I came home finally for, for a few weeks. I, was, so I had three or four weeks here before the before flying back out to India. And then, yeah, just got out there and did a little pre-camp uh, with, with, with uh, Bangalore. And Is that weird being in a team where you're a mixed match of players like you've never you've kind of then because you've cut you've started in teams where you've, you've known the squads when mm-hmm. you were at Sussex Essex and you, you knew the squads but then your transformation in the game you're playing now you're jumping in and out of teams yeah, yeah. what what's that like like how is it easy to to get your own game plan going and then mix it in with the team or is it what what kind of goes on in that franchise cricket's a it's a difficult place to be in and it, it really does vary from team to team to competition to competition. Mm. I think the, the from my experience, the the best and most successful teams are the ones where the the local players and the coach and the owners try and make it feel as much of a team and as a family as possible. So you mm. actually care about what happens because if we're being completely honest, it's, it is easy to not care, to just look after your own performance for yeah. four weeks and then... Have a hidden agenda and, and then, just, and then yeah. leave. But whereas I found some some teams where you, you you actually do get quite close to each other and you care if the team lose or if you win or if a, you know players do well or if they don't. That's that's the most important thing about franchise cricket, I think. Because um, yeah, you do you will get a lot of guys because you are there for between three and six weeks at a time. Mm. It is easy to fly in, look after yourself, fly out again. 
Um, but yeah, I, I've obviously I've played for I think twelve teams already now, just in these different leagues. Um, um, but yeah, it's, it's it's interesting. Would you feel like there's a different pressure? Because uh, say for the IPL, for example, mm. gone for big money mm. coming in, was there a different pressure on you then? There was in terms of social media. You big buzz, big hype. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, but in the team, they were very good. Most of the management were Australians. Mm-hmm. Um, or New Zealand, Dan Vittori was the head coach, Trent Woodhill, um, Andrew McDonald was there. But Bangalore, you had some big names as well. Yeah, right? you're in with Virat Kohli, Shane Watson, Chris Gale, A.B. Yeah. De Villiers. Um, yeah, so I wasn't the biggest name there by any stretch. So that wasn't, you know what I mean? There wasn't that type of pressure on me. I was still just a lad that's, I've only played four games for England at this yeah. point a few, in a few T20s. I didn't, I didn't have the career that Chris Gale or Shane Watson had had. Yeah, yeah. Um, but no, I, I actually didn't put too much pressure on myself. I think away away from cricket is the is the biggest challenge in your hotel room or whatever. If you see the stuff on Twitter or Instagram, but I I think one of my biggest strengths is when I'm at the end of my mark in a, a game of cricket, I could be here playing for Hove for Sussex. Sorry, I could be playing for England at the MCG. I could be in India. It, I'm quite good at, at, at kind of zoning out and just being where where I need to be at that point. What are your focus is when you're in that moment then? So just trying not to get hit for six, really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Isn't it all for everyone? Yeah. That does that. What what sort of like your because you've now really grown up and and you're very sw- like this year was the most switched on. I'd, well, mm. tactically, like I think um, I, th- I just remember watching the game and going, oh mate, well bold. Like what what a great choice of ball to bowl then because yeah, yeah. it is very easy to get thrown up in the the emotions of uh, t20 and I, I can only imagine it's magnified even more when you've got sixty thousand people watching and a hundred thousand if you're in anywhere around the world and um get caught up in those those emotions of that what keep what what your kind of your focus is when you're top your mark and there is that hysteria going on around you what what kind of things are you thinking about it's probably not the answer where you want but I think I'm just very lucky. I found it very easy to not get distracted by it when I'm yeah. when I'm in that period of my over. When it's my over, or even before then, if I'm in the field and I, I know I'm bowling next, I'm already th- thinking about my over, what end I'm bowling, who I'm bowling at. Yeah. So I do pre-plan. Yeah, so as you're much very meticulous about what you're yeah, doing. I try yeah, try to be. And then when I'm actually in the over, you know, I don't. As I say, I don't know. There's 30, 40, 50, 60,000 people watching. I, 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 you wouldn't know it at the time, which I, I, I completely get can be an issue for some people. They will get overawed by situations mm. or who you're bowling at or, yeah. or, or who you've got as your captain telling you what you want to do or anything. I'm, I'm very strong willed and single minded in, in terms of, you know, I don't care. As I said, I could be here at Sussex, I could be in India. It, 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 it's a game of cricket and I back myself to do better than the batter and I back myself to have more good games than I will bad games. That's kind of, if nothing else, that's my underlying kind of confidence, I think. Do you feel like a, pat, um, a lot of that's come from the confidence of the delivery and the skill you've got? Yeah. So like your, your slower ball, for example, um, was it quite a natural thing, that, yeah, that, that was, slower again, ball? Again, very lucky. It's a big change of pace. Yeah, yeah. Like you go from like 90 to, what, 70? Yeah. Which is a huge change of pace. Um, and that, that throws a lot of people. But do you, so you're thinking about the over that you're bowling. That's almost like you're pre-planning. Are you almost pre-planning every ball? Um, not really. I might try and, I might script maybe the first two balls, but then you've also got to be, then you're feeling a, it. Then you've got to be a bit more on your feet. But yeah, it's, it's more so just, no, okay, I'm bowling this end. So my short boundary is this side or that side. Yeah. Or I'm going to be bowling at this batter who's already on 60 and has been hitting most of his runs there that's so you need to 2020 is such a short period of time you've you've not really got much excuse for not paying attention um longer form of the game is difficult it's a long long time in the day but mm. yeah i think you just gotta you, especially when you know roughly when about in a game you're gonna bowl i know i'm gonna bowl one or two in the power play one in the middle one or two at the at the end of the innings so you should i, I was big on this so i used to always say it's sussex i still say it now as a bowler, if, you, if, you're, if you're experienced enough and you've played you know, upwards of 30, 40 T20s, the game doesn't really change that much, yeah. in my opinion. Um, you're going to have a pretty similar field set, 
more often than not it's at different times and you need to own it yeah um, so then it comes past the tactic and it's it's the belief it's of what you, you, it? yeah, yeah. Like you're the one in control of bowling the ball it's execute or not yeah and again that's easy for me to say because I'm yep. obviously I'm in a position where I'm still getting contracts around the world and I'm I'm still able to perform where I want to perform um so that's yeah it's easy for me to say because I've had success leading up to now I've had failure as well there was a period after the IPL and stuff where you do get found out a bit more and you have to I was probably a bit slow to react okay. in terms of how I bowled do you change much did you do anything different or was it just a I think I just had to work harder on on my consistency um I had to, I've and I still am now working on more of a Yorker and a couple of other variations. I was a bit too over reliant on on the back of the hand slower ball, um, and then you get you know good. I think batsmen over the last three years have got a lot better very quickly. Yeah. Okay. So you know balls and 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 patterns that I used to bowl aren't as effective now as what they used to be, and especially now I've I've played over I think 110 games T20s. That's 110 games worth of data. That's out there people can find that, out that every you go to these leagues you. now every team's got a proper analyst and yeah. the information they've got on you is it's huge they've got yeah. every game that you've bowled on on camera for, for the most part um it was, it was quite interesting i was playing in the i think i was playing in the t10 league last winter and the analysts would prepare these stat packs for the batsmen and the bowlers and i asked him can you prepare one on on me if i was you self yeah. asked them to look at if yeah. you were coming up against yourself yeah. what would your stat pack say that's cool so that was actually quite interesting just you can see so it calls all your stats what your bowling's like versus right handers to left handers how many slow balls you bowl to left handers right handers over the wicket around the wicket it's just at that time so this was a year ago now but it was just it was good to see anything that stood out to me that was glaring or if yeah. I was if, if the op- the opposition would look at that and say okay this is what he's doing or this is where you need to attack him and then yeah I made a few changes kind of from I there. guess it also reinforced your strengths as well yeah rather because it'd be very easy for someone to yeah, look at yeah, your yeah, negatives yeah, wouldn't it course. and go like oh blimey I'm, that's where I'm being yeah. hit the most but it also will show your strengths that's that's a really good um that's a really big thing to do actually mm. a lot of people wouldn't do that a lot of people wouldn't be willing to dr- like drop their ego a little bit and uh and find out like where li- look at themselves a little bit like some people don't like doing that they don't yeah. look into the mirror I think I again this was at a point last year I wasn't bowling brilliantly so I, I was looking for re- for yeah. reasons why and reasons to get better because obviously now I only play T20 cricket all my eggs are in in that basket and if I kind of drop off the cliff then that's it do you know what I mean yeah. I've, I've, and you know, I'm reliant financially on these competitions and, yeah. and, 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 you know, paying bills and all that. So you, you haven't got long to figure stuff out. So that was just a way for me just to maybe have a look and and see what was, what was going on and, and anywhere I can improve. So where are you at now? Like, so you say you're injured at the moment, <laughs> stress fracture. I mean, yeah. mate, that's tough luck getting that. And, and uh, what, what do you, because of your, your hypermobile, mm. you weigh as, as much as you do, mm. you're over 100 kilos, that's a lot of force going through your body. Yeah. Do you think there's actually something that, um, it, do you feel that a lot of people are going to ask, how do I bowl fast? How yeah. Do, how do, you must get it all the time. Literally, like, yeah. is there an answer that you give? Is there an answer that you have? Because everyone's looking for that beautiful formula, yeah. aren't they? Like, how do I bowl over 90 mile an hour? Yeah. I very quickly realized I couldn't. Yeah. Like, I was like, I can't. My, my, my uh, positives and my strengths were my skill yeah like my ability to move the ball and yeah, do yeah, things yeah. like that and, sure. and play a different format completely different to yours mm-hmm. is there anything like you say to people about either the bowl fast or like what to do with them so, yeah it's always a tough question and it's you feel like a bit of a knob can i, square, can I say that? yeah uh, <laughs> you can like, right, yeah because you you i, I don't want to just make something up because you get guys oh how do i bowl fast like it's such a dumb question I think <laughs> like, yeah. I can't well I've never seen you bowl yeah yeah that's the main thing if yeah. I see you bowl then I could maybe give you a tip to do something yeah uh two I think everybody's got a ceiling in terms of how fast they can bowl yeah naturally physically yeah I think you can probably you could probably add five six seven mile an hour on someone maybe but I think everyone's got. A, if you're a 75 mile an hour bowler, you, I don't think you'll ever be able to bowl 90 miles an hour. Yeah, you might be able to get to 82, 83, but realistically, that's probably your limit. Yeah. 
Um, so then the goalposts change really for those people because yeah. of like what you're what what do you want to get to and and you have to be very quick. I've seen a lot of people try to bowl too fast, yeah, and then have lost the ability to have that skill that you saw. And you're like, mate, you were yeah. moving the swinging it. You would have these amazing skills, but you tried. You're focusing on the wrong thing. Yeah. Um, so I'd say for for me, the one thing that I I can if I look at a bit of footage from when I was first at Essex playing to where I am now, I would say the, the, the one thing that I've sorted out that's helped me the most would, would be my run up. That's okay. That's the, the biggest thing. Yeah. Um, finding both the right length of run up and tempo. That's, 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 that's when somebody asks me, say, oh, how can I bulk quick or how can I get faster? That, that's the one thing I always say is, 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 is your run up smooth? Um, have you got enough pace at the crease? And are you balanced? They're the kind of the the three things you need to know. So I don't think you can hide from the physicality as well either, can you? Oh, you, 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 fit, you yeah. have to be fit. Like you said about is yeah. there do you reckon if you knew some of the stuff you knew now about yourself? Mm. I mean this is a question everyone will ask themselves, but back when you were was there anything you would have liked to have done or you thought maybe if I'd done that when I was younger then Is it yeah. real it's a real retro? I probably should have ran more when I was a bit younger. Just to stay less, just less to, I've, yeah, big. like, and it, and it helps, you know, the back end of your overs, you're not blowing as much, even though I only play T twenties now. Um, yeah, you got to do your running. It doesn't have to be. Like, I've never. I, I can honestly say I've never run fifty hundred meters. I don't think since I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, like con- as in continuously. Yeah, all my running is shuttles pretty yeah. much but you do longer shuttles you do like 100 meter shuttles and, you do and more then a break yeah, yeah so you'll do 100 meters rest for 30 seconds do another 100 meter like that type of thing because my the way my cricket is i don't need to be able to mm-hmm. plod around for eight hours yeah but the fit you are at the back end of the game because you've got to run yeah. in between the game you've exactly. got to do and then you gives you clarity of mind you're not you're yeah. not focusing on your body being yeah, yeah, yeah. in a state of shock at the end when you can be clear and making those good decisions 100 percent. so yeah just do like specific training um I've, I've had good people around me as well good snc's good physios i've been very lucky i've not been left on my own to to figure this out i've had a lot of help along the way an awful lot of help along the way um running mechanics and and posture and things like that to, to help take the load off off my back and, and and all that good stuff but um yeah i think i've lost track of where the bowling fast is was. just yeah i i was very lucky i could naturally bowl fast and i can still naturally bowl faster yeah. I, I, I can't hide I can't I can't say this is all down to me and I'm great and I've done this that and yeah, the other yeah. I'm very lucky that from day dot I've I've been able to bowl faster than most people um, but that, that only gets you so far you've become smarter yeah definitely it's easy More to skin. see from the side and knowing you as well like definitely become smarter um, so what was was the future what you got coming up what you got planned apart from your wedding God, yeah, man. On get, get married in a couple yeah, of days so by the time f- this goes out yeah. I'll be a married man yeah you will yeah so <laughs> there's, that's a fair bit to uh, to consider yeah um, have you what what sort of like your goals with your cricket at the moment what, what are you doing day to day to to make tomorrow tomorrow at the moment like to well at the moment also I've got this this stress fracture which is hopefully not far off so I'm just doing the stuff I've got to do at the moment for that which is isn't a lot it's just pretty much not get fat. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. then when I'm allowed to run and do it again, it's, it, it won't take me as long to get yeah. back into it. Um, it was frustrating getting injured when I did this year because I want to play for England again. Yeah. Ultimately, in terms of cricket, that's my ultimate goal. Yeah. Because there's, um, there's a T20 World Cup next October. So in a year's, a year's time and I feel I'm good enough to, to, to play in that. Uh, but I just I, I haven't been able to stay fit for a prolonged period of time, um, so that is still a goal of mine. Mm-hmm. Whether it's achievable or not, I don't know. But you know, I've just got to get back fit, and hopefully, I can bowl well enough to be, to get recognised. Um, obviously, I just want to get back playing ag- again. As I said, because because my 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 world and my job now is very different. I need to be playing in the winters and playing in these tournaments, you know, to provide for my family mm-hmm. now. So that's, that is a goal of mine is to stay fit and to, to, to get these contracts. That's, mm. that's my life. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. fine. I, I love playing here for Sussex. It's my number one priority in terms of cricket. Yeah. But it's not actually, it doesn't actually 
pay the bills really do you know what i mean yeah. it's 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 obviously not i'm not saying I, I earn terrible money or anything but i earn most of my money elsewhere yeah yeah so financially i need to be able to do that yeah so also with regards to that keep dipping my toe in in media stuff um you know I, it's nice i did i did a lot this year obviously there was a lot of cricket this yeah. in england this yeah, year with the world with it. the world cup and the ashes and and all that good stuff so there were a lot of opportunities to to do media work um so i did a lot with the bbc and with sky and you get nice feedback so that's nice for the you know you know you're, you're doing a good job yeah <laughs> so i'll keep moving on with that um there are some opportunities to get better at that to do some you know some training and, and things like that so keep keep an eye on that but um but yeah i'm just focused on on cricket and just hopefully i'll be back playing again you know in the next couple of months and and just hopefully I can I can kick on from 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 how I was going with with Sussex this year. Yeah, mate. I think it's exciting. The um, one you've got your wedding. That's yeah, exciting mate. for you. <laughs> no racket. You nervous for it? I'm not actually. No, not yet. I'm sure day of I might be a bit, but you're all prepped. I'm all, all good, mate. I'm, yeah, yeah it's, I'm I'm already married. Do you know what I mean? That's the way I look oh, at okay. it. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. nothing's gonna change. Yeah, just it's just a day just to a have ring. fun. Yeah, it's going to be a great day. Yeah, like, it's going to be a cool day. Oh, mate. Well, uh, I hope that day goes well. Um, and the next couple of months, I, I really want to see you back there. Yeah, like, Thank you. Seeing you doing what you're doing. Um, but yeah, people find you on Twitter and Instagram at yeah, Tomorrow mate. Mills. And, yeah, um, I'm around. <laughs> yeah, mate. Thanks so much for doing this. And, uh, no worries. Have a good time on the weekend. Cheers, Cheers man. Cheers, brother.